Thanks very much, everybody, for joining me once again. It's another series, and another series lost for Pakistan, unfortunately. We're sort of get, getting used to this now, aren't we? <clears throat> as Pakistan cricket followers, as Pakistan cricket lovers, series after series of defeats. But look on the bright side, it was the first win for Pakistan in 2024. Hopefully the first of many wins. So my phone's been busy today from uh, friends, from family, uh, congratulating me because Pakistan won a game against New Zealand in New Zealand. And what is that to congratulate about? They lost the series 4-1. They got absolutely hammered in the first four matches. They were nowhere to be seen in those first four matches. And I've got people congratulating me, saying, well done, Pakistan won a match. Is this our level now? Is this what it's come down to? I remember the times when teams like New Zealand, with all due respect to them, they're a wonderful team now. They've improved a lot. Their infrastructure is really solid. They're producing a lot of good players. But Pakistan used to beat them all the time. It was it meant nothing, Pakistan beating New Zealand, because we always beat them. And um, now our level is such that we beat them once and people are congratulating each other. Okay, ah, bale, bale, Pakistan beat New Zealand. Zabardust, Mubarak, Oakko. And it's nothing to be uh, proud about losing a series 4-1 and winning the fifth um, dead rubber when uh, they're missing the likes of Daryl Mitchell and Saudi and um, Kane Williamson and other players as well. Anyway, looking at the series, at the end of the day, Pakistan are relying basically on three players. Babar Azam, Mohamed Rizwan and Shaheen Shafidi to win matches for them. The other, matches, the other players are basically making up the numbers. Every now and then, you'll get a fucker as a man, you'll get somebody else. You'll get one of the other bowlers who will turn in a decent performance. But by and large, these are the three players that Pakistan is relying on to win matches, to win series, to take them home in matches. And um, these are the three players who are expected to handle the pressure and perform match after match. What are the other guys doing? You've got to balance this out. The stronger teams rely on all 11 players. They have seven or eight match winners two, three guys who fill in, make up the numbers, play supporting roles. You can't have a situation where seven or eight players in that team are barely performing, have no consistency and uh, struggle match after match. So looking at the, the team structure at the moment, why do Pakistan need to play five openers? And some of the openers, like Saib Zada Farhan, was given two chances, which I think in itself, is a pity, really. Um, he batted number five in the fourth match and he batted at number seven in the fifth match. Now, a guy who's opened throughout his career, what is he expected to do? Is he expected to come in and smash it all over and score 25 ball, 50, batting at number seven? Hardly anybody can do that. You've got to be an exceptional talent. You've got to be a freak to be able to do that. Had it been me... On that management, I would have said to Azam Khan, Saim Ayub, Saib Zada Farhan and Hasibullah that, look, you guys are going to play all five matches and doesn't matter how you perform or if the team loses, you're going to play all five matches. Take the pressure off them, say to them, doesn't matter whether you score ducks in the first three matches, you're going to play all five matches in the series. That gives somebody... Confidence, it gives them a little bit of breathing space. It eases the pressure off them instead of match after match where they are watching their back. Am I going to be dropped for the next match? Am I going to play? You know, what happens if I don't score a 50 in this match? What happens if I don't take wickets in this match? There's that constant pressure on those players. So the best way to do it is really to, to give them a proper chance, which Pakistan just are not doing. So... The team isn't settled. You, you know, you've, you've got Barbara Azam and um, Mohamed Rizwan, who I say are, are, are performers. <clears throat> they're the guys who perform match after match. You know what they're going to do. You know that they're going to be picks in that World Cup tournament um, coming up later this year. So you don't need to play them in all of the matches. Give the other guys a chance and see what they can do in those positions at the top of the order. And as I say, if those guys are being given a proper chance, then... Who knows? They, they might perform well. They might 
come of age as players. At the moment, you've got the likes of Azam Khan, who's being brought in for the occasional match here and there, plays two or three matches, and then he's dropped. Then they bring him back a while later, plays a couple of matches, misfires, and then he's dropped again. Now, any player in that position is, is um, going to struggle. World Cup is later this year. Pakistan's team is in turmoil. It's absolute chaos at the moment. It's just not settled. And it goes back to that three or four players who are probably sure of their places in that starting eleven uh, at the World Cup. And then you've got a number of players who are fighting for positions who haven't got many performances behind them, whose confidence is low. Look at Harris Stroud, for example. Look at the economy rate of some of um, his, his performances in this series. His confidence is completely gone at the moment. I mean, speaking of numbers, look at some of the averages and the strike rates of the Pakistani batters in New Zealand. You know, the likes of um, if the guy Ahmed, who played all five matches, averaged about eight, scored 40-something runs in five matches. Absolutely awful. Yeah, he got man of the match uh, in the fifth match. That was for his bowling. And he's hardly, uh, say, there's Malizzi with the ball. And, um, you know, look at the uh, economy rates of the bowlers, 9, 10 or thereabouts. It was a horrible series. And I don't think Pakistan's selectors, the management, have learned much from this series. In fact, I think where Pakistan started in this series, they've probably gone down a notch or two in terms of confidence, in terms of who they're going to pick for the World Cup. And... Um, as I say, what is the planning? What is the thinking at the moment in, in Pakistan cricket? What is the ideology behind their selections? What is the forward planning? Because most teams who are going into this T20 World Cup later this year, the better teams will have a good idea of which are the established players, which are the players who are fighting for their uh, positions, which are the players that are on the fringes of selection who they want to give chances to, and to see what they can do and how they will perform when they are given proper chances. Now, at this moment in time, we've seen in the 50-over World Cup earlier this year, where Bax, uh, earlier last year, sorry, where Pakistan, their preparations were a total mess, and they went into that tournament with um, misfiring players, with players not in form, players struggling, and um, we saw what happened, and... Uh, this is the, the similar situation in um, in the T20 World Cup this year where preparations are not great, the confidence is low of many players and um, I think confidence of players is being thrashed actually. It's, um, it's not a good situation and uh, Pakistan cricket is suffering because of this lack of forward thinking, this lack of planning and um, players are not comfortable at the moment. Yes, they've got to take a fair share of the blame for their performances but as I say, I go back to that point where players don't know if they're going to be playing in that next game or not. Lessons aren't being learned. As I say, the previous World Cup, the 50-over World Cup, we saw what happened in terms of preparation, in terms of team selection, in terms of the lack of planning. And it's it's headed towards that same situation. Yep, the matches are going to be in USA and West Indies, where conditions will be different to New Zealand. So that might help Pakistan. But many people said that the conditions will help Pakistan and India at the World Cup. And look what happened there. So overall, 4-1. Yes, they avoided a first ever whitewash. Pakistan hasn't won a T20 bilateral, bilateral series since 2021. That was at home to the West Indies, which seems an age ago. So, yeah, if this is the strongest format for Pakistan, which many believe it is, then uh, God help us, really, because Pakistan are in turmoil and uh, things are not looking good. Thanks very much for watching, and uh, look out for the next video. Thanks.